In this video, we'll talk about telescoping series, which is one of the few types of series that we can actually evaluate to get a number as to what the sum of the series is. So there's really only two main types of series that we can actually evaluate to a number, and those are telescoping series and geometric series. We'll handle the telescoping ones here and geometric in the next video. So what's the idea of a telescoping series? Well, the main thing you want to think about here is one of those old-timey pirate telescope type things. Right, one of those like looking glass things. And the point is, right, this whole thing collapses on itself to then give just sort of a little thing that's about that long when you squish it all in together. And that's the idea of a telescoping series that somehow the series, once you write it out, collapses on itself and then gives you something that you can actually write for the limit. The issue in doing all these series is how do you write this SN partial sum? And the important thing is getting in a way where I can then take a limit of this SN when I'm done with it. Telescoping series have the advantage that because they collapse, like the telescope, SN has an easy formula to write out. And then since that's easy to write out, easy to take a limit, and then easy to get the answer from there. So here's a little vague idea of what this might look like in terms of a telescoping series. So if I'm looking at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Let's start writing out the first few terms of the series. So the first term, I'm plugging in 1 for n. So I get a 1 over 1 minus a 1 over 2. For the second term, I'm plugging in 2. So I get a 1 over 2 minus a 1 over 3. For the third term, a 1 over 3 minus a 1 over 4. And what do we see happening? Well, the 1 halves are going to cancel. I have a plus and a minus, they cancel out. These also cancel out, the 1 thirds also cancel there which means if I look at the sum from n equals one up to three of this series, I just get one over one minus the last term, one over four. All the middle terms have all just collapsed on themselves, and I just end up with the first term and the last term. And the point is, no matter how many terms I take, this is always gonna be the case. So my partial sums Sn, which as a reminder will be sum n equals 1 up to capital N, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over capital N plus 1, and that's easy to take a limit of. That's where we're headed with these series. That's why they're nice, because I get a nice expression for S sub capital N in terms of capital N. I don't get that normally with most other series, but for telescoping series, I can work that out. So here's a standard example of what you might see for a telescoping series. Investigate the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n times n plus 2. Now, this one is not written in the telescoping form like the other one was, right? The other one was written as 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And you can sort of see how things are going to cancel, because when I go up one more step, I'll have a plus n plus 1 that's going to cancel that minus there. So what we have to do to make this work is write this expression in a form like this. And the idea there is something similar to partial fractions. So I want to write 2 over n times n plus 2 as something over n plus something over n plus 2 and see where that gets me. You can solve this out. And what you end up getting here is this should be a 1 over n minus a 1 over n plus 2. It's going to give me a 2 on top. So instead, now we're looking at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2, because those are equivalent expressions. Now, to figure out if this series converges or what it converges to, I need to look at the partial sums. So my partial sum is the sum from n equals 1 up to capital N, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2, and we can just start writing this out. So for n equals 1, I will get a 1 minus a 1 third. For n equals 2, I get a 1 half minus a 1 fourth, because I'm plugging in 2 for n. For 3, I get a 1 third minus a 1 fifth. For 4, I get a 1 fourth minus a 1 sixth. This keeps going. At the very end, if I plug in n minus 1, I will get a 1 over n minus 1 minus a 1 over n plus 1 plus a 1 over n minus a 1 over n plus 2. And that will be what I get for my entire series with some terms missing in the middle. Now, what's going to happen? This 1 third cancels this 1 third minus and a plus. This 1 fourth cancels this 1 fourth. This 1 fifth will cancel the first term over here that's a 1 fifth. The 1 sixth will cancel 1 over here. This n minus 1 will get canceled by a term before it from n minus 3 because there will be an n plus 2 there. And this n will also get canceled by the term right before this one. So what is left over 
is this 1, this 1 half, this n plus 1, and this n plus 2. When you see the pattern for these, you'll see it. The point is because I have a plus 2 here, I'll get two terms on the front and two terms at the back. So this expression here tells me that Sn is 1 plus a half minus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. And so then does this series converge? The question then asks, does this limit exist? Limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n is just 3 halves because both of these will go to 0 as n goes to infinity. So my limit is 3 halves. This means the series converges and it converges to 3 halves. That's the idea of telescoping series and how these problems work. The point is when you write the series in the proper form as a difference of two different fractions, you'll then see that as you take more terms in this series, things start to cancel out and the series sort of collapses to just a couple terms at the front and a couple terms at the back. And if the series is a nice one, the terms at the back will go to zero as n goes to infinity. Then given that the series converges and it converges to the number that you get by looking at the terms at the front. So there is one example of a type of series that we can actually compute the value for. There aren't many of those, but this is one of them, telescoping series, because they collapse and become nice and easy to simplify once you work out what the partial sums are and then can take the limit of that.